Oh, yeah, quickly. I'm always quick, Chair. Mr oh, Skidmore, okay. good to see you again. Thank you. The last estimates you told me, we are talking about the cost of the SIDS compliance program. Mr Skidmore, the evidence we have or the investigation that we did led to an indication that the SIDS compliance or initial test results of the investigations were in the order of 15 to 20,000. But then depending on that, what would that would determine the work that needs to be done, the cost involved. So you're, you're talking 15, 20,000, OK? Uh, it, it depends on the aircrafts and it depends on who's doing the maintenance, but that was a rough indication. OK, well, that's what you said. The evidence we have on our investigation is about 15, 20,000, but then repairs if necessary. I have a friend who has a 72 310Q Cessna, about 5,000 hours. He received three quotes to make his, his SIDS compliant. All three quotes were within $5,000 of each other. And this lowest quote was for $60,000. It's now parked up, doesn't fly. And as you said to Armadale, I really appreciate you coming to Armadale that day. You want to see people flying. He is now parked up because three quotes, all within $5,000 of each other, the cheapest was $60,000. Is it $172,000? Sorry? Is it 172? No, 310. 310, all right. When you were saying last estimate was about 15 to 20,000, where can he get them for 15 to 20,000? It depends on the model of the aircraft, Senator. It, it, we, we were saying you wanted a, a rough sort of number in regards to the average, but we have models going from the 100 series to the 200 series to the 300 to the 400 series. So it's gonna, it could vary throughout those series. So I apologise if it sounds like we got it horribly wrong, but it might have been a case of a a 100 series roughly was around three to five thousand or ten thousand, and and anywhere up to the sixty thousand. Well, that's where he's at sixty thousand. Hence, it's parked in the shed. I mean, the value of these planes just deteriorates something terribly terrible. You received a letter from a Mr. Charles Cabell from Walker. Last year, I quote, because last year I was at Lake Hood in Alaska, where there are about 600 plus float planes. And walking around the lake, I asked quite a few Cessna owners about SIDS. Not one of them had ever heard of it. The FAA operates under a different regulatory system to ours, Senator. The Cessna SIDS was put out as an airworthiness limitation that was Cassa. necessary under our schedule of maintenance to By implement. By CASA. It, in accordance with our regulations, yeah. Senator. So CASA's introduced SIDS, correct? No, Cessna has introduced the SIDS program, okay. Senator. Well, those owners have never heard of it over there. He's saying this letter. Look, have we not known of any catastrophes in Australia because of the condition of these Cessnas, as far as their makeup of their frame? You know, the reason why this, the the uh, SIDS program has got to be carried out. Have we had any fall out of the sky because of uh, the only one falling I, off? The only one I can refer to was an ATSB investigation on Cessna 208. 20 I'd have to get the actual details in regards to that, but it was a structural failure of the elevator. Yeah, that see, wasn't in flight. Luckily, it was found on the ground. See, these, these are claims, as I said to you last time, where this bloke has his plane parked in a rust-free area at Armidale, actually, a long way to the west coast of the salt water. Vehicles don't rust there, or very, very little. And we're getting all these, all these ground, and of course, if they go to sell their, their plane, they can't get any money for it because it's got to have the SIDS inspection. Time's up. It was, an, it was a program put in place by Cessna Centre and I've seen the limitation, I've seen the actual documentation that says this is mandatory inspection. In accordance with our regulatory, um, our legislation, we have to implement that. Yeah, well, that's the end of the Cessnas for the second hand ones in Australia then by the sound of that. Thanks, Chair. Right on, mate. Oh, no, hang on, what are you doing? You're having three bloody coalition senators. Just get him out of the road. No. Yes. I've been sitting here all day. You can wait like the rest of us. I love you dearly. No, no, no. You can wait like the rest of us. Is this oh, I'll be yeah. very quick. Absolutely. No. Very quick, you can't mate. just blow in the last minute. I'm sitting here all day like a stunt. Oh, I, I don't mind too much, Chair, but I'll be very quick. I'll, I'll no. I'll have no. No, you don't just blow in. Just come on, get on with the meeting. Done by now. How long you got? Five Two minutes. minutes. Two minutes. If it goes any longer, but I'm going to be on your way. Okay, okay. Come on. Okay. I've got a very simple, some very simple questions Don't about the... Don't tell me these up, mate. I'm the senator on the edge. Uh, okay. Uh, I've got some... You've got to understand the culture of this committee. This is all being very friendly. Okay. I've got some very simple questions about the uh, the proposed FRMS changes. Uh, my understanding is 
moving away from industry exemption processes to the CAO, CAO 48.1. Um, some in the industry have contacted me about concerns that the uh, there has not been a proper transparency about the reasons why for this change, particularly the data that's relied on by CASA to justify the change. It, 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 did, have you provided the industry with, with all of this data? Senator, yes we have. We put all the information available. Everything was uh, we based the 48.1 changes on are on the website. Okay, when was that done? Oh, I don't know the exact date, but I can find out, Senator. Okay, that would be useful. Um, Apparently, uh, a letter was written to the industry recently which said an operator may continue to operate under the existing roster slash scheduling practices, provided any operation outside of the new prescriptive limitations is supported by an FRMS. Can I just confirm then that this means that uh, industry participants will be able to uh, propose their own FRMS systems? Um, you know, outside those prescriptive rules and annexes one to six, provided they are uh, supported by relevant data? My, understand, my understanding is that the operator can propose to us a fatigue risk management system and that's their fatigue risk management system however they define it. It could be inside, it can be outside. The okay. And that's something you could approve then to be compliant with this new... We'll uh, have to do an assessment yep. of it. But and that's yes. what you do and you're open to, to, to approving it? Yes, Senator. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Can I correct... Just, Chair, can I just well, correct one thing yep. I said before to Senator Williams? It was actually a... ATSB report into a structural failure of a Cessna 210 aircraft and that was released on 16th of August 2013 that raised safety concerns about structural integrity of aircraft. They, had a they were pretty time. fair plane, they had a variable prop, prop didn't they? Uh, Cessna 210? Yeah. It's quite a reasonable yeah. aircraft yeah, it centre, is. yes. You've got to be pretty stupid to stall it, I know. Um, not intentionally. Senator Sturgeon.